So last night I was able to take pictures of Jupiter and Saturn. So here is the setup. So I have the C14. I did not put any power mate on the telescope. So all I have is the camera in the back, uh, the filter wheel, off axis guider, and the focuser. Uh, basically, they are there for the deep space imaging. So I did not touch any one of them. But I replaced the full frame camera with a smaller ZWO camera. This is not really small. This is also good for astrophotography. This is ASI 533MC Pro. So the way I connected is actually very important. So if you see this, this is actually threaded into the uh, the QHY CFW3. So the good thing that you can do is with 533, there is a thread that goes into it, and a small adapter. Uh, this is so. This is the camera sensor. If you see inside here, the usual adapter that comes with the 533. You can thread that and in addition to that one, I also have M54 to M42 adapter, right? So that is threaded to this one as well. So you can actually plug directly this one into the camera if you do that. And you are ready to go. Your focus is exactly the same as what it should be. So all right. So we have now the pictures from last night. I think I have them here. So these are actually videos. So these are all the ones that I have. So I checked these like between this file for Saturn. I'm just looking at it to see if it's any better. I can check this file. Oh, this is actually a lot more stable. Let's go with this file. So what we need though is you need something called auto stacker. So if you don't have it, download it, it's free. And when you open it, it's going to open like these two files here. I guess two windows, right? It's pretty simple, really. So open the files from last night. I think this is the file we are looking at, 1028. So some people actually take multiple videos and there is another advanced program called WinZupos and they derotate because planets are rotating all the time. They derotate these files and combine it and stack it. That's more advanced, but this is good enough. Like if you take a video, like for Saturn and Jupiter, I know it's not advisable, but you can take like four minutes. It depends on your uh, program. Some people take two minutes and then multiple videos, but I generally take anywhere between like three to four minutes, which is good enough. And then, so these are the options here, the planet, dynamic background, I guess the quality estimation, uh, noise robust, like leave all these the way it is. I'm doing like 20 here, but I think I'm going to increase this definitely because it's a very good data that we got. So we can see it when the data is analyzed. It is going to put a graph here. So the way it works is you take like AVI files or SER, which is an extension. I use SharpCap to record these files. And in that you can select what is the output that you need. Uh, you can also use Fire Capture. You can use any other planetary programs that can do a live view for your camera. But once you get those AVI files, the video files, what this program does is it takes them into frames and it combines those frames. That's how it works. 
So we are looking for best frames. So here, probably like 50% here. So we'll go, it's a pretty good data actually. I'll go up to like 75% stack, normalized stack, RGB align, which is good. It creates a folder called 75 and you want it in the TIFF file. You don't need to drizzle it. So the next thing that you have to do is come here. So this is the AP size. Basically, the it is going to draw those alignment points. They are called AP. And what's the size of that? Like 24 is the smallest, so go with it. And then this minimum brightness is a setting that was already there. You can manually click on each one of these, or you can place an AP grid on it, right? So, and it actually creates that AP grid there, right? So right now it created like 84 alignment points, which is good. 640 by 480, which is the default. If you want to clear it, you can clear it. You can also zoom this file. And what some people do is they go into these frames and see which ones are better frames. I'm thinking like this probably has on both sides, no shade here. I'll go with this and I'll place an AP grid. And once you do that, you stack it. And this stack will create that 75 like folder in the same folder as where your uh, video files are. And it creates that TIFF file for you. It's a pretty good uh, format that you can have. So now let's see, AP75. And this is the file that it created. So I'm showing you here. So it's pretty decent. Like if I zoom in. So you can use another program. So go to Registacks. And it opens up Registax software. So select your picture, the ones that you got. Make sure you are in the right folder. 75, this one. Stretch intensity levels, say yes. So here, what you can do is you can Increase this preview. Like generally, I put like 29% on generally on these, which is roughly good enough around that number. Right? You reduce it as you go down. Right? And then keep reducing it further because you don't want. So I put something like this, 29, 27, 22, 15, two and one. Uh, you could go further, uh, but now here we are talking a little bit more sharpening up to 13. See here, you're getting something here, so probably back up, back out. 12 is good. 12 is good. Actually, I didn't do anything. 11. 11. I'm a little worried that I don't want to overdo this, okay? 11, maybe 11. Okay, and you can save this scheme. Like you can say Saturn at best or something, right? And you can load this scheme anytime you want. That way you don't need to do all this yourself. So this is linear. This is Gaussian, I guess, wave, wavelets, which is going to make it sharpen.
I believe. Anyway, so show full image. It zooms in a little bit for you. Uh, looks good. Decent. I do see some kind of stacking marks here, a little bit. The division is so clear. I really like it. Another couple of things that I wanted to show you is this um, RGB balance. When you click on it, it opens up this one. And if you do auto balance, it changes the color for you. So basically, rather than that red color that was there, it was like this. It changes to this one. So some people actually like that red color that was there. And some people wanted like this auto balance to work. So go back to the Jupiter. I'm going to show you that one too. So go back to the clear this file, open Jupiter. I don't know which one is better, but I believe one of these, it's very big files. Let's go to the six. This is Jupiter. I'm going through the frames. Pretty good data. And the big one is this one. Oh, wow, this data is a lot more cleaner. Okay, so this is probably the best one. Uh, same stuff, you place the AP grid here. You already have everything else. You don't need to analyze, just stack it. So you did um, put that file here. Looks decent. So now we are going to open this in the Registax. Open the same file. Stretch the intensity levels. Let's see. Load scheme sat on it its best. So this it art it now it processed it. Looking good. The great red spot is all the way up there. And the remaining data is pretty good. I think we can go a little bit more sharp on this one. It's pretty good data, so. I'm going all the way up to 14. It all depends on how the data is, so you don't want to overdo it. So let's do the same thing that RGB align. Let's do that. This is probably the best image I ever took of Jupiter. And then RGB balance. So this is where, oh no. I like this better. So I hope this video is useful for you. If you are new to this channel, I take pictures of astronomy, pictures of planets, 
and I show some processing techniques as well. So if you are interested watching these videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.